So physical properties. Amides, um, we'll compare them to the carboxylic acids. They're going to have higher melting points than the corresponding carboxylic acids because they have more possibilities for hydrogen bonding. So we've got the lone pairs on the oxygen can bond with hydrogens on other amide molecules. And then we also have, we have the hydrogens here that are bonded to the nitrogen. And so we have more places that we can get hydrogen bonding between molecules. So the force of attraction between the molecules is greater, therefore the boiling point, the melting point is higher. Um, and here's an illustration of we've got the, the hydrogen on the nitrogen, hydrogen bonding with um, the lone pairs on this oxygen. And so we've got all these different possibilities, and so they stick together really well. Now, when you substitute on this hydrogen, I'm sorry, this nitrogen, so this is a primary amine. So it's got two hydrogens here that can engage in hydrogen bonding. If you substitute one of these for um, an alkyl group so that you get a secondary amine, now you can have no hydrogen bonding there. You've eliminated one of the sites of hydrogen bonding. So the melting point goes down. It's easier to melt. If you make it into a tertiary amine, there's no hydrogen bonding possible between amide molecules because there's no hydrogens on that nitrogen anymore. So the melting point trend is that primary amines, amides, I'm sorry, have a higher melting point than secondary and tertiary are going to have the lowest melting points. We've been talking about hydrogen bonding, amides can hydrogen bond, and so it is very understandable that the smaller amides are going to be soluble in water. Now, even a tertiary amide, like I've made this into, a tertiary amide can still hydrogen bond with water because the water has hydrogens to bond with this oxygen. So that's why even the tertiary amides are going to be soluble in water, the smaller ones, up to about five or six carbons.